Coming up on iOS Today, it's all about getting things done. Plus, Apple has released the latest software update. Jeez Louise, they sure do do that a lot. And some rumored products. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Plex. With Plex, you can organize and stream your personal collection of movies, TV shows, music, and photos anywhere on any device. Go to plex.tv slash twit and enter code twit10 to get $10 off a lifetime Plex Pass subscription. This offer applies to new subscribers only. And by Aftershocks, unbelievably comfortable open-ear headphones. Hear music and crystal clear phone calls like never before. Visit iostoday.aftershocks.com and use code iostoday for $50 off the tech bundle. And by Zapier. Zapier connects all your business software and handles the work for you so you can focus on what matters most. Right now through the end of next month, go to zapier.com ios for your free 14-day trial. Whoa! Welcome to iOS Today. I am here. I am Micah Sargent, and I am joined by (gasps) Matthew Casanelli. Hello. (laughs) Hello, hello. How are things going there? Can you breathe? Um, Yes, but only because we have all of the windows closed, and I haven't gone outside today. (laughs) Good, good. I did go outside this morning, and the air was foggy, and it's not because of fog, folks. It's because of ash. There is ash in the air because California is on fire. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leo Laporte is on vacation, so I invited my pal Matthew Casanelli, who of course uh, is my co-host on Smart Tech Today, to join me today on iOS Today to talk about Watch OS, TV OS, iOS, and iPad OS, plus any of the other OSs that get thrown in there. I think HomePod OS <laughs> kind of counts as one. Uh, they're they're all there. They're all there. Uh, but yeah. Matthew, I thought this would be the perfect time for you to shame me on how little uh, little work I do when it comes to getting things done, when it comes to, to task management, when it comes to that. I am one of these folks who does not quite uh, pay much attention to the 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 whole scope of, of adding a bunch of links and, and, and to do's and things like that. I kind of, I, I live my life around my calendar. And so I was curious, uh, you as a, a multifaceted freelancer and creative individual, (laughs) uh, I was curious kind of what your process is. And I think the best way to kick this off is for me to kind of talk about mine Sure. And then use that as the uh, the jumping off point, as it were, and then hear about all the things you do with yours. <laughs> well, there's plenty to cover. Excellent. Um, so, like I said, I'm kind of a, a calendar-based person. Uh, if it's not in my calendar, it's probably not going to happen. Um, at least I won't be there for it to happen. Uh, so as soon as I hear, you know, hey, we need to do this or we need to do that, or for example, this week with the fires, we're rescheduling a bunch of stuff and shifting things around. And so the inimitable uh, Colleen Goldstein is is in charge of making sure that all of that happens. And one of those things is to make sure that I get those calendar invites so I can accept <laughs> them and see them in my calendar. Um, so I use Fantastical. Uh, this is an app that's available nice. for multiple platforms. It's four ninety nine in the app store. And it was a purchase I made a long time ago and I have never regretted it. It is uh, my calendar for doing everything. Fantastical is super cool because it not only uh, has like that natural language processing thing where you can say hair appointment, 3 p.m. Uh, at this location, and that all, yeah. all of that data kind of goes into the app, but it also um, can, can sort of plug in with different... Um, with different technology to, so, so different apps and things like that can automatically uh, grab events for you. I like to use it with my calendar app to easily add events to my calendar. And I like its features for scheduling new things. So I'm kind of based in my calendar mostly. And that's because yeah. most of the stuff that I do is event-based. It's, it's, you need to be here at this time to do this show or what have you. And sort of the smaller things that happen within that Right now, I mostly do the processing in my brain, which 
all signs point to that not being a good idea. <laughs> But I'm just really bad at like sticking with a process uh, outside of just using my calendar. Now, yeah. I'm curious. I think it'll, let's do a little bit of a back and forth. Um, what calendar service do you use? And on top of that, how important is your calendar to your process for getting things done? Um, lately, I have been gravitating back towards just the primary calendar. And I think in many ways, it's because I think it has the best um, visualization visualization of your week. Because I, I do like Fantastical's, um, like it has a little preview window where it'll, it'll show you how many tasks you have that day. But for me, I actually think spatially a lot with my calendar because it's it's kind of. I mean, sometimes maybe I can get to this, but sometimes this maybe isn't the greatest thing. But it's like you have this amount of time in your day and. When you can see like how much is blocked off, I think you get a really good oh. sense of like how much free time you have to mm -hmm. do the actual work in between things. I d it probably does depend because for someone like you, recording podcasts is both the work and the event versus like a lot of people have meetings that maybe you don't actually get anything done in. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but I have been leaning back towards Fantascal primarily because they have Siri shortcut support. And mm. for anybody who isn't familiar, I will probably be referring to shortcuts for pretty much every single one of these apps because a lot of times, I mean, especially over the last few years for me personally, some of that has dictated why I use this app or, or an app or not is because it can be automated versus doing something super manual. And so I do actually prefer Fantastical for entering events because you can, the thing I love the most is you can do like, slash F for like the family calendar and it'll automatically choose which calendar it goes on to. So that's really helpful Wait, because this is for Fantastical. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You're always teaching me new things that I didn't know. This is, I just need to have, I don't know. I need to consult you like every day of the week. So what did you, what do you need to tell me today about the apps and services <laughs> I'm using that I'm getting wrong? I didn't know you could do this. So is it, is it just the first letter of whatever calendar? Yeah, or like if they're similar, one or two letters. But like I have like a friends and family one that I share with my girlfriend, and so I can just do slash f to send it there. I don't, I don't think I actually because you can add reminders with Fantastical too. Mm -hmm. That's one cool, and they can also show on the calendar. Um, and we can get this to this in a second. But the reminders app redesign is one of the new things that I'm really like taking advantage of for my getting things done type of apps um but so fantastico does work across both of those and they have new shortcuts that let you like scripts when you open a certain calendar or something like that so i could easily have like on mondays it always opens up to my um smart tech today calendar so i can make sure i'm showing up to our events that we have scheduled nice. <laughs> or something like that um but yeah i mean one thing that's nice about calendars is they all just work system level. So regardless of which calendar app you use, the calendar actions and shortcuts work for that app basic in terms of adding or finding calendar events because it's all just synced to the system level, which is like a unique advantage of the system apps as opposed to like a third party. Like, I mean, I actually, we've had pr problems with <laughs> my, my iCloud account is my Gmail. And so mm -hmm. sometimes when I get invites to my Google Calendar, it doesn't actually show up properly. But there's a little bit of fixing there I need to do. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not even sure how uh, how to go about fixing yeah. it, uh, which is the unfortunate thing. I like to, uh, if we can show my screen, the, the different views that are available um, with Fantastical. And so with this, I can see, you know, in, in a week what my events look like. I can also, let me see if it's swiping from the bottom. I think you swipe top. up. There, there we yeah. go. Swipe up. For, and then I get, get my month view with my day view on the side, which I enjoy. And that's most of the time what um, I use this mode a lot where it's the month and then the day view on the side. But you kind of mentioned being able to see how your days look is really nice and, and where things are fitting in and in a given day is uh, yeah. handy. So you can go, oh, wow it feels like today is super busy, but actually I only have three things and I've got, you know, between X and X completely free. The main calendar app is the only one that does um, travel time properly. And so I actually yeah. do use that a good amount because especially since I generally work from home, if I have an actual event somewhere, I do want to have the travel time stuff included so I can plan around that accordingly. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice about calendar apps is you can use 
whichever one you want, depending on how you feel in the moment. It's not like because it syncs all together. It's exactly. like just however you choose. Yeah, um, Fan- Fantastic Hell on Mac OS has uh, travel time stuff, but for some reason the yeah. iOS app does not, or at least uh, maybe I, have trouble, I have trouble getting to it, but I have been able to do it. In fact, whenever I have an event that I know I want to tie to, so basically any non-podcast event, I always have it set up so that it is uh, tied to, or has has travel time attached to it. And so if I yeah. use it on the Mac, then I can add that travel time properly. But yeah, for some reason it's not available on um, iOS. So I don't know what that's uh, all about, but uh, maybe I'll have to reach out to the developers on that. <laughs> I think it... I do feel like Fantascal is slightly due for an update. Um, I have a feeling they're probably like working on Fantascal 3 at some point because it has been around for since like 2014. It's been around for a while, mm-hmm. but I've definitely gotten the value out of it. Yeah, I, um, I love having it. <laughs> and like I said, frankly, that's where most of my stuff happens. Um, the other app that I use... Uh, regularly is an app called do and do is a reminders app that it also costs 499 so i think there's something to be said for that 499 price honestly yeah. that it it feels like those apps are are apps that are high enough that you can count on the value uh there I can't speak for every app, but every app that I've ever purchased that I use on the regular has cost $4.99 or around that price, and mm-hmm. I've been happy with it. Um, Do is excellent uh, because it is an app that does not let you forget something. That's why I love Do. So you, uh, you know, a lot of <laughs> reminders apps, they will send you a reminder and you see it and you can either dismiss it or you can snooze it or you can tap complete. And then it goes away and it might come up like two hours later or whatever, whatever you rescheduled it for. But what I need, my brain needs to be reminded over and over and over and over again it's because like that's how I work. You. Yes, it's like, <laughs> it's like Micah, Micah, Micah. <laughs> I've hired a squirrel that pokes me until I get the thing done. Uh, and its name is Do. So Do, you pop in a reminder. Um, so let's say it's really good for medicine. So if you take like medicine regularly, that's one of the, yeah. the ways that it's it's good for. Uh, but you put in your your calendar if, or you put in the thing that you want to do. So this says book taxi tomorrow, 6.15 a.m. Again, it's using that excellent uh, natural language processing to figure out what it is you want. And then you can set it for you know, a given time, in this case, uh, they wanted at 6.15 a.m., but it's got a snooze feature here. And the snooze feature is currently set for five. And what that does is it snoozes, you can automatically snooze the notification, but in five minutes, it's going to pop back up and remind you again. Also, if you don't pay attention to the reminder, if you see it and then you look away from it, which is something that I often do, then bzz, five minutes later, it's buzzing me again. And it will keep buzzing me and keep reminding me until I finally dismiss it. Every other reminders app I've ever used, I end up uh, no. I, I end up like looking at it once, and then it doesn't know that I've sort of seen the 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 reminder, and then it doesn't keep bugging me because it's already done its job. It's already sent out that reminder. But with this app, it doesn't matter it, it, until you dismiss it. It's going to keep bugging you, and that is what I need. I need that squirrel. So I love do for very specific tasks, like I said, like medicine, or if there is something that is like has to happen at a very particular time in a given day, and maybe it's uh, you know a meeting that's going to be coming up. I need to have this prepped before that happens. This app, I I have to have it. I have to have it one hundred percent. And so def- go ahead. I was just gonna say it's definitely invaluable. I think this app might have overwhelmed me. Um, I just updated it, or I just reinstalled it, and then synced it. And all of my reminders are from 56 weeks ago, which is <laughs> around the time that I. Yeah, but so I mean, I just haven't used it. But it's right when I started making YouTube videos, and I um, started getting like a lot of incoming messages and things like that. And I think I talked about this on a, a podcast I used to do, Supercomputer, but I think it gave me um, notification blindness for a while. Like, not literally, but just like I couldn't like have, I just like stopped seeing individual notifications right. and just started seeing like the wave of mm-hmm. them. And this app sometimes would be like pretty intense, but it also is like 
I could probably scoop my cat's litter more often. And so I might, I might need to revisit this now because that was like a new experience to me. Um, but it's also like, I mean, it works very, very well. Notif- <laughs> like nothing else can compete with it. Notification blindness, I think is that, that is a very real thing for me. Um, I used to have an, uh, a thing set up to where when it rains or when, when rain is in the forecast for the next day, then send me a text message that says, hey, you need to pack your umbrella because there's going to be rain. And given that I lived in Missouri before, same thing for <laughs> snow. You need to put on, you know, pack your coat for tomorrow because there's going to be snow. And I was getting those so much because it's every season at all times <laughs> in Missouri and that, that I stopped really seeing them. I didn't, I would go the next day and then it would be raining and I'm like, man, I really wish I would have brought my umbrella. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I'd look and back and it's check. like, you totally got that <laughs> notification, but they all went away. And so an app like this, I think, can really easily fall into that. And that's why I don't like to use it for what, you know, what, you may have may have used it for I don't know, but it's not an every uh, to do reminder for me. It is for very specific things that I have to absolutely do and have to be reminded about um, without. Yeah, that's probably sort it. of falling because I can it. I can see like twenty different things in here that it's I have that that's a theme in general of my productivity app usage is that I tend to go <laughs> all in or something like that, <laughs> yeah. and then it's like. It just piles up, and I, I think slowly integrating stuff like this over time is what's best. Like, I think actually something that I've found with my own personal productivity lately is so much I try to plan how I'm going to change things without just like going through it once and observing what I am already doing mm-hmm. and then optimizing it from there versus just being like, oh, I'm going to like now have 50 notifications a week for something that. I'm not used to. And then it's like, I don't get why this didn't work out. It's like, no, there's pretty clear reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that this app does that I really like is that it has a timer uh, functionality. And so if you mm-hmm. are a little picky about your uh, drinking of, of co- brewing of coffee, brewing of tea, those kinds of things, or if you just like, this is the amount of time that I want to spend watching a uh, television. This is the time until my laundry is ready to be picked up. You can have multiple timers going at once and then it will, you know, run those timers down and give you notification. Hey, that French press is done brewing. Don't let it over steep. You need to pour it into a carafe because otherwise it's going to be very gross. Uh, or like I said, TV time for the, for the kid. Okay. Well, 30 minutes until you've got to start on your homework, whatever it happens to be. Um, so the timers are great. I have to admit, I don't use those as much because I just like to use the built-in timer app on my Apple watch for my steeping and things like that. Um, but it is a nice function that's built in. You can add as many timers as you want to. And, uh, this app also allows for syncing across, uh, your devices. So my iPad, my phone, my watch, they all are running the same do list and can all let me know, Hey, it's time to take your medicine. Oh, you forgot. Well, here it is 10 (laughs) minutes later. You need to do it. Uh, which I appreciate. They do have a new Siri shortcut action, so I, I will be revisiting this now. Interesting. Um, well, let me know about that then. Cause... One one request I have of every like reminder type or like due date app is that that I've had a use case for years where I want like multiple reminders within the same day, but not like at some sort of hour interval. It's like morning and night or like morning and afternoon type of thing. And mm. it's always like do you want it every four hours or like, or you just have to create two, I guess, but then you're kind of managing that. Um, I don't know. That seems like something I, I remember specifically with do like I wanted, I was a social media community manager. And so I wanted to check at the top of every work hour right? And it notify me, but it was like, I didn't want to have 12 different <laughs> reminders and then it's all going off every five minutes or something. So it's <laughs> like, yeah, that would be buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, counterproductive, I think, at that point. Um, when we come back from this little break, I will talk to you about the third app that I use that I think will maybe give you the heebie jeebies that I use this app in this way. Uh, mm-hmm. But we shall see. And then we'll learn about how Matthew does all of his magical work uh, to, to get things done. Yes. But first, let's talk about how we watch and consume our media. Well, iOS today is brought to you today by Plex, which brings together all the media that matters to you in a single app and is available on any device, no matter where you are. You can organize and stream free your personal collection of movies, TV shows, music, favorite podcasts, web series, news, and more. 
Basically, you're giving your media the royal treatment it deserves with Plex Pass. With premium features, you can bring out the best in whatever media you have. Now, Leo has talked before about his plan this year. His big plan is uh, getting a, a tuner, uh, an antenna, and pairing that up with Plex Pass so you stop paying for cable and get great TV and record it free. You get those HD broadcast channels recorded right to your library. Basically, you get that antenna out there, you hook this up, and you've got those broadcast channels coming in, saved on your local library. You don't have to worry about all the extra stuff. There's offline accessibility with mobile sync, so you get to sync your movies, your shows, your music, your photos, and so much more to your mobile devices so that you can have that for offline use wherever you go. You know, if you are on a cruise like Leo is right now and has a poor signal, well, all that stuff is still available there, which is very nice. And of course, there's premium music as well, so you can enjoy those premium music fe features like lyrics at custom curated playlists based on your music preferences. So I think about, you know, you got a Halloween party coming up and everybody's had a little bit of the punch and that means it's time to bust out the karaoke. Well, that is what these uh, premium music features are great for. Those lyrics pop up, everybody can sing along and have fun while you're doing uh, singing the Monster Mash. And premium photos as well. So there are excellent uh, photo albums. You can share them with folks and you can see them uh, played out on the screen as well as a cinema-like experience when you're watching your personal movie collection. So instead of just you know popping in the, the Blu-ray or popping in the VHS or something like that, you have this whole experience of Plex Pass ads. So you're gonna get trailers, you're gonna get cast interviews, you're gonna get behind the scenes features, all together to make this uh, excellent experience. So, you know, it's not as much fun to just uh, pop in the DVD and get the movie started. This gives you a little bit of an intro. You can you can see behind the scenes features that maybe are, were not available to you otherwise. So it just adds a whole bunch more magic to your collection that you already have. And if you've got multiple users, well, it's so much easier to switch users with Plex Home. You can create customized managed accounts and make switching users easy with Plex Home. And guess what? They've even got parental control features so you can safely let your little ones enjoy too. Yeah, I don't want Henry and Mizzy watching some of those uh, action films I watch. Now with Plex Pass, you're also going to get Plex Pass Perks, which gives you exclusive access to promos and discounts on partner products. And you get to use the newest features before everyone else does. So being a lifetime Plex Pass subscriber, I got to check out the UI, the new UI that they've released before other folks were able to. And yeah, so you get an inside look at some of that stuff, as well as lots of other features there. Um, there are even more features. They've got loudness leveling. So, of course, sometimes you're watching a, a show and then you want to go to another show and it's blasting you across the room. No, that's what loudness leveling does. It helps keep everything on the same page there. There's also Sweet Fades, which sounds like a cool nickname for a person, Timeline View, and Advanced Audio Features. Are you ready for your Plex Pass? Well, Plex is offering Twit listeners $10 off the lifetime Plex Pass subscription for new subscribers only. When you go to plex.tv slash twit and enter code twit10. Once again, that's plex.tv slash twit and enter the code twit10. Plex Pass. You've got to check it out. And you know what? Just head to Plex and check out the service in general and go from there. But I promise you're going to want to check out Plex Pass for sure. Uh, being a lifetime subscriber there, oh, it's fantastic. I I recommend it for everybody who wants to collect media, no matter what it happens to be, music or videos or photos or what have you. It's just an excellent way to keep track of all of your stuff, separate from having to rely on all of those subscription services. So thanks again to Plex. That's plex.tv slash twit with the code twit10. All righty. What's up? I'm currently revamping my Plex setup because I actually use it to... Um, watch my own videos after I export them from Final Cut Pro. Like Ooh. I'll end up, I like finish on my computer, but I don't want to physically transfer the file to my phone because I like to watch my shots as it'll be consumed. Like most people actually watch YouTube on their phones nowadays. Um, and so it's like I always use Plex and then I can watch it from anywhere. Nice. So oh, that is great. So yeah, if you want to, after you get your movie done if you or your video done, I want to run out for coffee or whatever, then if it's synced via Plex, then you'll be able to see it while you're in line waiting for your Java mochaccino, <laughs> which is not something that I think you would order. But you know. I got a pumpkin spice latte yesterday. Oh, it was snap. very, it was very basic. Of Where me. did you get it? <laughs> 
just Starbucks. Oh, and I actually, no, I was wow. even, so it was my birthday too. And I didn't use the free thing. I like opened the app after I paid and it was like, uh, you get a free drink. And I was like, I cannot do two, <laughs> two lattes in a row would destroy me. <laughs> and yeah, now they only let it. So it's like just that one day, right? You can, yeah, only, exactly. that's, uh, it used to be like a whole week. I'm, I'm a little sad about that because <laughs> it's not always that I'm going to be able to get out on my birthday. One year I was uh, in the hospital on my birthday, so oh, I wasn't man. able to get my coffee. I bet if I would have called them and said, you know what? I really need my, <laughs> my pumpkin <laughs> spice latte. <laughs> Although by that time it's the peppermint mocha by the time my birthday rolls around, but yeah. those are way too sweet. Anyway, um, the third app that I use for keeping track of what is going to be happening in a given week. And I see the shaking of the head for Matthew Casadelli. Um, <laughs> it is my app for, for saving links. Yeah. He's about to leave. Um, it's my app for saving links. It's my app for reminding myself of things. It is my app for, uh, pretty much gathering any little bits of information. And that folks is the messages app for iOS. Uh, uh. Uh, I have a conversation <laughs> with, with me, myself, and I, uh, where whether I'm at work and I see a link that I want to check out later, or I'm at home and I'm on a different device, uh, or what have you, I keep my links and my bits of text and all of these different things handy right in my messages app. <laughs> um, it's, it works. It works. It sounds like. It works. I've been doing it for ages and it works. Um, I have tried <laughs> different save it, save it later pockets and all those kinds of deals. Yeah. And for me, it just was, I don't know, extra stuff that I didn't need when I love that those, those apps have all of that extra functionality. Those services have all the extra functionality, but it just wasn't something that I needed to have that made it worth like dropping yeah. it into those apps or what have you. That makes sense. Um, so does it, it used to like send you a message and then you would send it back to yourself because it didn't it, know like, what duplicated. was happening. Yeah. yeah. Does that still do that or? No. So it, okay. it so I, I should say no, in most cases, there are times <laughs> where I will get one and that is whenever, um, something gets out of sync to where it starts sending it to an email address instead of my phone number or cause you know how in, in, oh, yeah. in the messages app, you can choose always deliver from blank. And, uh, so then you send via your phone number to, and if it gets a little confused and it thinks that I'm trying to send from my phone number to my iCloud email or from my phone number to whatever other email, in those cases, it does get, uh, doubled up. But as long as it stays on both my phone numbers on either side, then it only does it once, which yeah. is nice. That makes sense. Um, I've actually, I use this for an emoji because I always want to like test it and play with my little face in there, but mm. I don't want to accidentally then just send an emoji to somebody immediately. <laughs> so I usually open up my own profile to do that. Um, that makes sense. But yeah, I, I guess I, I just like, it is like the same as emailing to yourself and it does make sense. It is, it is funny though. Um, yeah, also wow. I totally need to set you up with the shortcut to do this too. Oh, Although boy. it's probably, I now that I think about it, the new share sheet is so good. You almost don't even need it. Like, right. Well, so it won't, that's the one thing about the new share sheet is that it will not surface my uh, face, my, like my contact as an yeah. option in the top, which is a bummer, but I actually do have a shortcut <laughs> that I set up specifically for this where, oh, nice. and I can't remember why I needed it because there was a reason that it made sense to do it. I think it just sort of sped things up where I would have to like yeah. scroll through to find my name or whatever. This sped things up. Um, so yeah, I do have a shortcut and I did a little bit of formatting stuff, which was nice. So it wouldn't like double send the link or what have you. Um, oh yeah. Cause it always copies the title and then the link, but then it shows a preview. Right. Like I act, that is one of the reasons that, I mean, now it's in notes and messages, um, the link previews that messages does. And those are great. Like, that's one of the reasons I moved to reminders um, was because it just does those previews now. And that's really helpful because especially for um, I save tweets a lot. And so I would I have a whole shortcut that takes the Twitter uh, embed link that you can create and then scrapes the text of the tweet out of that so that I could actually like whenever you save it into a random map, it'll just be a URL and that's not very helpful. Like I always want the message so I can just read it and not have to constantly reopen those links. Um, but now messages, notes and reminders does that on its own. Yes, I do like having those uh, previews there. Um, so that <laughs> Fantastical, Do, and <clears throat> iMessage are pretty much the full scope of my uh 
to do task management, getting things done, vacation. Um, how about you? I assume yours is a little bit more involved, yeah? I have a couple more apps than that. Um, let me really quickly switch to my top-down view. Get this out of the way. I even got my YouTube flower <laughs> thing that everybody has yes. to have. Everybody's and then the got their... accessories off on the side. Yeah, this but, is um, legit. <laughs> I just recently redid my whole iPad home. Is that too bright? By I was going to ask you to turn down the brightness just a hair. Yeah. yeah. I have a shortcut that lets me... Should I run that? Yeah, run that shortcut. Run okay. that beautiful bean footage. Uh, just let me just scroll oh past God. all of these real quick. Um, are these <laughs> are these normally like color <laughs> organized? Oh yeah, or? no, this is all color coded. Wow. Towards, uh, the red ones right here are YouTube. Pretty oh straightforward. Oh my word! And this is all hand organized. So this is just my shortcut stuff, and there's a lot here. But what should we do? Fifty percent? Yeah, let's do fifty percent. Here, wait. Let's just see. Forty. And it's getting t- okay. So that, and I can just quickly show that shortcut too. I just have a list of those values. Uh And then I actually, um, I think I scrape out the, oh yeah, because it just grabs the numbers out of it. Oh, look, Dew is telling me to shave my neck. I'm a year (laughs) overdue. (laughs) I've been growing this beard for 375 (laughs) days, but only on my neck because my reminder app was not telling me about it. It's just like I'm a mess without it. Um, <laughs> I but, truly am a mess without it, without do. Uh, <laughs> this looks good, though. I feel like I'm watching a YouTube video right now. By oh, Kelly. it is. It's like, hey, guys, how's it going? It's Matthew <laughs> Casanelli here. Don't um, forget to like and subscribe <laughs> and check out all um, my links in the description. Um, I mean, definitely Shortcuts is my number one app, but I think where most of stuff starts on iOS is Drafts, which is... I love this because it just immediately opens to a field and I can say, remind Micah to stay safe. I don't know. But I can usually, like, what I love about drafts is Mm -hmm. that you just start typing right away and you don't have to, like, create a new note and then, or even a big thing with drafts is, like, do you even want to create a note or do you just want to type? And then it's like, okay, this is a reminder. This should go and do this should be a calendar event. What? Drafts is really great. So like I usually use this. This is basically like my inbox for iOS. Okay. And then it's just a simple type field like that. But then they also have actions pretty much like shortcuts, but it's just for text. Um, and Drafts is awesome. They have a full JavaScript library that you can do to like build a whole programs that run off of the text that you type. And so... Sometimes I'll do like reminders. I'll type an entire blog post in here uh-huh. before I send it off somewhere else. I use Ulysses as my like um, writing repository, but I love drafts a lot. And it also works really well on the Apple Watch. Um, I just installed all these apps, so I haven't organized it, but you can just dictate. Uh, you use the honeycomb really view? Quickly. I got oh, the yeah, list view. You didn't, did you not see my tweet about the honeycomb view is superior in oh, every way? Oh, God. Um, so we're going to fight about it. Got it. <laughs> Re, uh, um, remind me to fight Matthew Casanelli in a, <laughs> in a cage match. <laughs> Good. Got that in my drafts. Wait, what's it called? Um, drafts? Yeah, drafts. And the, the developer, Greg Pierce, is also very awesome. He puts a ton of effort into this app. And it's it works on Mac too now. So that's actually great because it'll... You can sync it everywhere and just have like a little scratch pad is mostly how I think of it. But there's also tons and tons of advanced, like one even advanced feature that I like doesn't really work here, but arrange mode, you can like rearrange paragraphs <gasps> really? together. Yeah, that that alone is killer. Show me how to make that into a reminder, though. The, the one that you put put in there. Oh, um, OK. Oh, yep. Things are going crazy. You got seven layers I have this now. pinned open and those are the groups. Um, I have a reminder. Oh, yeah, it's in the tasks group, and then I can add those into Fantastical, or this is just like send it off to reminders. And then I think even if I say, I think if you use this little separator, you can say like groceries, and it will detect that and split it and then send it off to that So you list. can super quickly type it out. Yeah. Without there being, that's interesting. I need to double check. Let me see. I just reinstalled this. Okay. And then... Let me open up reminders too. Oh wow! I was able to. Yeah, so I was using drafts, kind of following along uh, with you. 
it's called grocery, not groceries. So that probably just failed. Or I don't know. Maybe it sent it into my main list. Uh, remind Micah to say safe. Oh, it was a note. That's right. I got the. Uh, that's how you add a note to your reminder. My bad. I, it is a little like drafts is almost. I wouldn't say it's definitely not as powerful as shortcuts, but it's so deep that like I can't. I personally can't get that deep into it because I'm doing shortcut stuff also. So there is a lot more there. Um, but it's one of like the best automation citizens on iOS for sure. I think I like the idea that I can, like you said, just start typing text. Um, and I was able to get the cage battle that we're going to do into, <laughs> um, into my reminders app pretty easily. So perfect. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. I got to start training. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You better add that to your <laughs> calendar. <laughs> uh. This is, I'm like acting with my hands right now. That's yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> again, it, now, and now it feels a little bit, uh, what is that, Sesame Street, or I think it was called <laughs> Between the Lions oh, yeah. or something. I can't remember. I have to do everything dramatically with my hands. <laughs> um, so the other app that I did just completely go into full force was Reminders. And this is a test with, I also use things, but I slightly... I had to jump all the way out of it in order to really like understand what I'm using. Um, but the biggest thing for me is that when I, because I do work independently, a lot of my stuff isn't actually due. I don't have to work on it at a specific time. And I, I spent a lot of time in the last year, like assigning myself due dates and then being like, ah, like this isn't the right, I like didn't do it that day because I was doing something else. And so a lot of my task management apps started to fall over themselves. Oh, probably okay. more notification blindness too. But that, so instead I dumped everything into reminders and I have personal lists, work lists. I have one for each one of those shortcut sections. So this is Holy. actually those groups in the colors. Um, <laughs> because I, because it is like I have 45 ideas for production shortcuts <gasps> or something, but oh. it, that doesn't need to be a to do until it's ready to be worked on. Um, so, so this is, this is things and you're using this as a, uh, no, idea this is storage. Oh, this is reminders and you're using yeah. it as an idea storage device. Yeah. And cool. I have like a topics list here that has 256 ideas. Wow. So, <laughs> wow. and, and, the reason this works, though, is because they now have drop downs, so I can I have them all sorted into different categories, and then each like I have fifty seven or twenty six iPad tips that I want to write, and then it's all like just like drag and drop too, which is nice. Oh yeah, um, and then the the reminders app also got this new action bar here where you can quickly assign due dates or locations, um, and like this type of arriving at work or in the car type of thing. This has gotten so much more power. I didn't realize yeah, how powerful it's like, this has gotten. Um, and I think another thing that I liked is the stuff that I always had of flags in priorities uh -huh. because then I have like my flagged list of stuff that I want to work on and uh, do is going crazy up here. Yeah, do is very upset uh, that you've not finished doing what yeah, it is. Yeah, it might not ever stop. <laughs> Uh, do not disturb is not helping either. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> do, is, do is pushing past your do not disturb. That's how important it is. Um, but it's basically like a lot of the stuff that's due today actually does need to happen today. But then things that I just want to work on can be flagged and it may or may not happen today. And then I can visually see priority wise. Like that was something that I had in things a whole tagging system for priority. And then I was like, wait, I don't need this much. Um, <laughs> but I think now what I'm kind of doing is when I decide that like this is, I have an article written. We actually talked about this on Smart Check today. Google Assistant has can control your Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Is um, Then I, I have a, a shortcut that takes this and then finds... A checklist that I have for art, like articles, and then puts that into things. So this is kind of my like inbox of ideas and things before it actually becomes a to do. It's just a reminder, yeah. which makes sense. And it's like, as this might sound simple to anyone listening, but as somebody who's like gone deep into like GTD and like getting checklists for everything, it did help to sort of like come up for error and just like put 
just write down your ideas, like write them in drafts, send them into reminders later. And then I can just like check that when I'm ready and not be like, oh my God, I have 300 undone tasks. <laughs> I'm like a failure or something. So right. it's like yeah, the mentality get... of it is really nice. I... And then the other thing too is just like series support is great. So I, I do like to not have to specify which app to send it into it's just like remind me about this and or like add it to my video production list and it'll go right there so that is it seems to me that you in the interest of being able to use siri with these with these different services you do try to stick stick to what apple provides as much as you can and then sort of step out from there if you need to it's somewhat. It's also kind of like a backbone because the reminders lists exist everywhere. And so something, I mean, even though like I do love drafts, you have to have drafts in order to save information. But using reminders is a lot like the way drafts works. Um, oh, I see. Like I can just, I think I wrote an article like a year ago for the suite setup about how reminders is like the backbone of my system because I can send information in here that can later um, like I can use shortcuts to pull it out also. Gotcha. Yeah. But it's, it's still like if I want to go in and add a reminder, I have to like choose the list right away. And then that alone is like, I don't remember anymore what I was going to write down. So that's, that is why I prefer drafts and it can go deep into whichever list I'm ready for. Cool. Any other apps um, that you use for, uh, for your, your getting things done? I mean, I have I have too many. I I am working on a what's on my iPad video because I I like walk through. I have I have cool apps for like writing scripts. Slugline is really nice. Um, Field monitor like turns my iPad into a monitor for this camera that I'm using. Oh wow! So I can have like on my iPad over here showing what's on the screen, and so I can like unbox a video and see what I'm doing. Gotcha. Without like look because the camera's above me so i'd have to like look up and stuff like that but i mean there's tons and maybe we will have to do a shortcut specific episode because there's so much stuff here that's <laughs> clearly un, un, um, but yeah that's the, those are the main ways i get started of like remembering what i actually need to do Awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Matthew Casanelli. We will be back uh, in just a moment to talk about the news for iOS today before we round things out with a few questions and our picks of the week. So now I'm excited to tell you about Aftershocks. You folks know Aftershocks, and if you don't, you should. Aftershocks are these great you can't even really call them them earphones. They're not earphones, they're, they're headphones because they use a patented bone conduction technology. The headphones don't go inside your ear like earbuds that hurt and are constantly slipping out. In fact, I have some with me here. They go on the outside of your ear. They use this bone conducting technology that is, um, you know, you, you probably have, have heard or seen some commercials uh, for different products that offer bone conduction technology, but none of it is like Aftershocks. Aftershocks is unique. And in fact, look, I'm wearing glasses. I've also got my in-ear monitors in my ears, and yet I'm still able to put the... Uh, aftershocks on my head and very easily listen to audio right here with them. So uh, they are great for music listening, but they also provide a level of comfort that you're not going to get elsewhere. They, uh, they send these little mini vibrations through your cheekbones to your inner ear. So it actually bypasses your eardrum. Your eardrum does not get involved at all. Uh, they are made of titanium uh, so this headband wraps around and it's super, super, super lightweight and super flexible so that even, you know, as you're putting them on, boop, it pops right back into place. But it's not so tight whenever it pops on that it, it you know, is, is causing any pressure there. It's, it's ridiculously comfortable, so much so that I forget I'm wearing them a lot of the time because they just rest there and I can still hear as I need to. Uh, you're going to be able to enjoy crystal clear phone calls and music like you've never heard before. Uh, that's because there's premium pitch technology. So you get a premium audio experience with wide dynamic range and rich bass. Uh, there's wireless Bluetooth 4.1 connectivity, convenient multipoint pairing. That means you can pair them to your iPad, your phone, your Mac, all these different devices. So if I get a call on one of my devices, I can make sure to pick it up very easily and hear it and then switch to the other device and, you know, go back to the music listening that I'm doing. Uh, they are IP55 certified to repel sweat, dust, and moisture. 
So if you're working out or you're, you know, you've got bad weather going on, no problem. That IP55 certification keeps them uh, resistant to those things. Six hours of music listening or calls on a single charge and 10 days of standby time. By the way, it only takes up 1.5 hours to charge these devices. They've got a two-year warranty. Now, aftershocks, of course, I see people sometimes driving with headphones or earbuds or those kinds of devices. And that makes me so nervous. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't, ugh. These make it safer if you are a person who needs to have your music just playing directly to your ears or something like that or need to take a call while you're uh, on there. Then these make it safer for driving. They make it safer for outdoor activities. I'm taking my dogs for a walk. I want to be able to hear if there are cars coming. You can't do that if you've got headphones uh plugging up your ears. These rest on the outside so you can easily cure things that are happening. Um, and then we also have the Aeropex Tech Bundle. So that's going to give you the Aeropex, which that's what I'm wearing right now, that have the advanced audio. Uh, they also have a longer battery life and they are waterproof. So that means they're submersible up to one meter deep for 30 minutes. Take them swimming if you want to. So the Aeropex are going to give you that completely waterproof uh, functionality with better audio. I believe it also has Bluetooth 5 technology. So it's a, a newer version of, of Bluetooth as well as uh, their premium pitch 2.0. So improvements all around, in fact, for these new uh, Aftershocks Aeropex headphones. And I think that they, uh, they, they feature a new angle uh, that, that gives you even better sound throughout. Uh, if you'd like to get an Aftershocks tech bundle, you can do that by visiting iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the code iostoday at checkout. That's going to get you $50 off. Now, that offer is only valid in the United States. If you're outside the U.S., you should still definitely check out Aftershocks. But once again, that's iostoday.aftershocks, that's S-H-O-K-Z.com, and use the code IOS today, and you too can forget you're wearing headphones because they are so, 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 comfort so comfortable uh, and so easy to put on, so easy to pair, and genuinely, they do sound very good. Uh, I've been very impressed with my uh, Aftershocks. That I enjoy. Mine come in green, which of course, as as many of you know, is my favorite. <laughs> uh, so they pair quite well with my midnight green phone. But these here are the uh, new Aeropex. So they are, I think, what do they call it? A cosmic black. Uh, those are the Aeropex. And we thank Aftershocks. So head over to iostoday.aftershocks.com with the code IOS today. All right, Matthew Casanelli, iOS 13.2 is finally here. Yay. Yeah. Uh, that is means... That looking for the update tomorrow, also 13.2.1 or something. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. And then 13.2.2. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to keep happening. Um, finally, everyone has access to Deep Fusion. Uh, Deep Fusion. <laughs> you, you will never be the same. <laughs> uh, which, of course... In a world... <laughs> world with deep fusion uh it's also called sweater mode basically <laughs> it makes um the photos that you take with the iphone crisper clearer more fine detail is captured um it uses the bionic neural engine to capture images with dramatically better texture detail and reduced noise in lower light uh that is on iphone 11 iphone 11 pro and iphone 11 pro max there are also a bunch of new emoji, which I know people are excited about. I am personally excited because, of course, I rock the betas. And so I can only send a bunch of emojis to other people who are rocking the betas. Yeah. So it's nice to have them all and know that, you know, everybody that I can get to update as quickly as possible can be using these emojis and seeing them. Um, as well as uh, announce messages for AirPods. What is that? It'll like, first of all, it has a great little sound effect, which... I totally have as a shortcut file, oh, of um, course. <laughs> which is awesome. But it, um, it'll just, when you're wearing AirPods and you get a text from somebody, it'll just say like Micah says, and then read the message out loud to you. So you don't have to go in and confirm it. Um, I don't remember earlier in the betas, you could just speak a reply also, mm -hmm. but I think they took it out. I don't, I think I've missed if that got added back in yet. Um, but it's like, then it's truly hands-free. Like you get a message and you can just say like yes or no and it'll send it back. Um, but I've got to double check on that one. 
but it's really nice and it it um, sounds helpful. Here, let me see if I can get that sound. Yeah, effects. while you're while you're looking for that sound, <laughs> sure. I'll men- mention the other things. So we've also got uh, HomeKit HomeKit Secure Video, which is nice. So uh, we talked a little bit about this feature before, but uh, it's a way for you to locally. It uses your local devices, so your HomeKit hubs, that's your your Apple TV, your HomePod, um, as, and iPads as devices for doing the processing for video. So your, your cameras that work with HomeKit that offer this functionality, it will record the video and save it locally, and it can track for like pets or people or different things like that. I think cars is another uh, one that can check. But instead of sending it off to a server somewhere, it does this processing locally. So it's better for privacy, better for security, yeah. um, which I think is going to be a great feature. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, come out soon, as well as HomeKit enabled routers, um, which will offer a, a basically like firewall off your HomeKit enabled devices from the rest of your internet connection, which should be good. Do you know, does that mean you can also like turn off the internet with HomeKit? It's my I understanding. guess it wouldn't really work. <laughs> yeah, it's my understanding that that's not currently a feature. However, what you may be able to do is uh, sort of shut down the the internet for your, you know, the things that are connected via yeah. HomeKit and still yeah, keep the internet running for though. others. It's just like don't allow access, even though it's not actually turning off the Wi-Fi because right. then you can't turn it back on. Yeah, it's like, um, okay, but how do I get it back going again? <laughs> Did you find the sound? Yes, let me see. Did that come through? Oh, yeah. Could you do I it one more time? It, sure. Here, let me turn it up all the way. Ooh, I it's like nice. that. Yeah, it's like shortcuts. If you put in the URL that's technically like the it's like file slash system library slash private frameworks. How in the world <laughs> um, did you find this? I don't. It's always um, is it Guy Rambo? Oh is, yeah, Guy, uh, he's, yeah, he's Guy always Rambo. the one. Or or it's Stephen Travin Smith. Um, yeah, S- yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Those, uh, one, those are the names I always read but never say out loud. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know like Renee will Renee Ritchie will pronounce it. Guy, but his full name's Guillermo. Yeah, yeah, Guillermo. Ron, uh, yeah. Gu- yeah, Guillermo. Anyway, yes, I know who you're talking about, and uh, that's where we often get rumors like the <laughs> yeah. uh, two that we've seen uh, come up. So iOS 13.2 comes out, and uh, Guillermo goes through and looks at these uh, the code within them, and we've got a potential smart battery case that was dug up in the files. Um, as well as a little bit more information about the ultra wideband tracker that Apple will likely announce. So first and foremost, the everyday person, re- it seems, and I can only, you know, I'm speaking anecdotally, but a lot of my family and friends who have iPhones really like it that they have a battery case uh, or have liked having a battery case from Apple in previous models. And so there's, um, in again, in the code, uh, there's a suggestion that Apple will be releasing a smart battery case for the 11, the Pro, and the Max. And they're going to look a lot like the ones that are already out there. Um, I've never needed a battery, needed or wanted, frankly, a battery case. But I'm curious, have you ever rocked the battery case? I have not, actually. But I might consider it this year because I'm trying to use my phone for more um, photography and video stuff and just having the reliability of knowing that it'll stay charged and, and also, um, that it charge, it drains the case first before your phone sounds really nice. So like you could go out on a shoot day and just use the case until you're ready to actually put the phone into the like tripod or something like that. And then it's fully charged at that point too. So I might, I might be getting one of these, although it is like, I wasn't expecting to spend 250 bucks on AirPods Pro this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the next thing. Uh, really quickly, we'll touch on the, um, yeah, the UWB <laughs> tracker, but no, we do need to talk about the new AirPods. Um, so Apple, uh, it's just a little bit more. And again, uh, from Guillermo Rambo, he's dug into the information that's available in iOS 13.2 and there's assets for AirTag. Uh, so we've known before that there was going to be some sort of tracking system in the new iOS um, because of the ultra-wide chip that's in the new iPhones. Yeah. And 
that, you know, we didn't know quite what it was going to be, what it was going to look like. Uh, but apparently they're going to call them air tags, which to me makes sense. You've got AirPods, you've got these other air devices, air power, which never came to be. And air tags are here, which will be a lot like the tile or tracker devices. But instead, they're supposed to be a little bit better at helping you find devices because they use the ultra wideband chip. Yeah, I was just showing my girlfriend this last night, actually, the airdrop thing, because it's it was like, see, it doesn't show you over here, but then when I point it right at you, you show up specifically. So that will be cool it's because it is like, it's like, where is that thing in my, is it like in this bag? And if you point it at the bag, it'll show up versus not. So those those seem awesome. Like I agree. Especially, especially if they have shortcuts capability, of course, I'd, I will be using the heck out of that. <laughs> you know, so Apple has announced... Um, new AirPods. They're called AirPods Pro, which I like the pluralization there. Uh, it's not AirPods yeah. Pros, it's AirPods Pro. Um, and the, these feature some, we've seen this across the whole scope of people who are making earbuds right now. It is active noise cancellation technology, but also some sort of thing that is called like transparency or listen alive yeah. or some form or version of it that lets you not only do the active noise cancellation when you need to, but also sort of turn it off or turn it down or adjust it so that you yeah, can like hear reverse it. You. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Put that thing down, flip it and reverse it. Right. This is, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think it's, that's the, Oh true. man, they got to do a commercial like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it would be so cool to have Missy Elliott on there. Oh, uh, that would be so cool. There's also adaptive EQ. So these, they're really trying to go in uh, with these AirPods here to, 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 I mean, they're called AirPods Pro and they're trying to really uh, stick to that Pro moniker. Um, so they've got this vent system to make the pressure pressurization on the outside of your ears the same as inside your ear canal. Yeah, There's nice. a microphone that faces in and out. So it's listening to what the sound sounds like. Your with, thoughts. <laughs> it lis it's listening to your thoughts, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's listening to the sound within your ear canal <laughs> to... Uh, to make adjustments to the active noise cancellation. I don't know why I keep saying cancelization. Um, as well as the active noise that's on the outside. And then it is also adjusting the EQ based on what it hears cool. facing in and facing out. It's pretty cool uh, technology that they're working with here. And it, there's not only just a motion detection accelerometer for changes, but also a speech detecting accelerometer and something new, which is that there's this little oh, yeah. pad that detects force. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can press this pad to turn on and off the noise cancellation. And it's my understanding, too, that you'll be able to. Yeah. If you press once on the force detecting pad, uh, it plays or pauses or answers a phone call twice to skip forward, three times to go back. Kind of what people have been used to. And then you just say, uh, hey, Sierra, to to normally talk to Apple's voice assistant. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an improvement um, or actually quite a bit of an improvement over normal yeah. AirPods, uh, as well as sweat and water resistant. That's uh, IPX4. Um, you sound, I mean... Uh, I'm the worst because now I just realized that I didn't know some of those features before I just bought it right away. But I was like, I mostly, I knew that I was going to be reviewing it. And so I wanted to make sure I got it. Okay, do is freaking out on me again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that it's un, like the thing that I wanted the most was I've, I've had many times before where I'm wearing headphones and do totally miss something that I should have been hearing and or even just like, around the house. I think I gave my girlfriend my first pair of AirPods and now we're just like coming up to each other and scaring each other. <laughs> because it's like, ah, I didn't have no idea you were there. So the, especially cause they're in the ear, it's like you wouldn't hear really anything, but I need to test this on Bart going into San Francisco yes, because that'll be I think, I think I had to use overcast because it was the only app that was loud enough for me to actually hear what people were saying in podcasts Whoa. on the train. Cause it's like, otherwise I was, even at full volume, it's still like, I mean, it, I think it EQs for voices specifically, mm -hmm. um, Air Overcast does. So I'm curious what the EQ features are like here. But yeah, I also it, find, they, it, I find it fascinating that Apple has included uh, three different sizes of, of uh, <laughs> pad, of, of whatever they call it, earplug in, in the package. That's very on Apple. Usually like, oh, yes, we've shaped them perfectly for everyone's ears ever, so you don't need multiple sizes. But uh, the little white plastic bit, 
or white silicon bit is going to, or silicone bit is going to be changeable between small, medium, and large. But they've done a really nice fastening system where it clicks in really easily. Um, can you do the AR feature real quick? Oh yeah, I can try that. Let's see. That is one thing that they have on like tons of pages, and like you might need to move. Uh, probably, oh, there they are. Here, wait, stick your hand in. I'm curious if. The, oh yeah, is oh, it okay. doing? Occlusion, or that's the new feature on the it's iPhone. It's trying. It's uh, really yeah. trying. Let me make uh, it a little yeah. bit smaller. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not very. <laughs> it's not very good, but uh, let's see. We'll Probably s- better on the iPhones. Can I rotate? Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Here, let it's me. It's just a normal case turned on its boom, side. Boom, boom. Side. So now you can see what these ones look like. Um, and there's that force pad. Uh, that I was talking about. It's a little hard to ah, see, but yeah, the white thing. That white thing, yeah, has um, nice. force sensor behind it, and so you press once, twice, or three times to make adjustments. Uh, this is the vent system that does the uh, pressurization changes, along with the. Uh, I think these are like the sensors to tell if it's in your ear, and then these come on and off. Um, so yeah, the 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 case is a lot wider, which is kind of funny. Um, I'm not used to. Yeah, it's kind of a it'll be an interesting <laughs> pocket device. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting them and trying them out. They're going to come on Thursday, this Thursday. So not too terribly long from now. Um, and that is AirPods Pro. Uh, we are uh, just about out of time. But of course, uh, we will come back to talk about um, the app caps that we have that absolutely want to talk about this week. But before we do, I want to tell you all about Zapier. Uh, Zapier is bringing you today's episode of iOS Today. We've talked a little bit about automation as we do because Matthew Castanelli is here. And that means we got to get excited about Zapier. See, growing a business is hard. You don't want to be wasting hours every day moving data from emails to spreadsheets to your CRM to wherever you need it to go. Shouldn't that just happen? Well, Zapier can help. In fact, that question, shouldn't that just happen, is a thing that I say to myself, even though I'm I'm not running a business, I don't need to be running a business to have Zapier help me. There are lots of things where I'm like, why isn't that just happening for me? And then I go into Zapier and wow, looks like I can make that happen. Uh, Zapier has over 1,500 apps and is the easiest way to automate your work. You can focus on what matters most so you can connect all your business software to engage your leads instantly, automatically import new customers, and notify your team about opportunities. Zapier is also more customizable. That's because they support multi-step zaps. So the possibilities are virtually endless. You go in, you start to build something, and then you realize, whoa, I can go into more details. I found that like using other things, I end up having to compromise a little bit. I can't quite get the detail and the exact thing that I want to make a change to, to, uh, put my automation through. And Zapier with those multi-step zaps and the the filtering functionality makes it very easy to do exactly what I want to do. And it lets you do that quickly. In fact, you can build the solution you need in minutes. There's no more wasting your time on tasks that you know could be automated because that's what Zapier was built to do. You head to zapier.com slash iOS and connect the apps you use most and let Zapier take it from there. And that's no joke. You can go there. You can start plugging in the apps that you use the most, and Zapier starts to give you recommendations for things you can try out. They're great jumping off points. It's super fun to go in and say, whoa, if I connect Dropbox with Google Drive, I can do this, this, and this. That's fantastic. And it's easy to build the exact solution you need in minutes without writing code or having to ask a developer to help you. You can join more than 4.5 million people who are saving an average of 40 hours per month by using Zapier. Now, I have plugged in Zapier in multiple places. So one of the things that we do is uh, for Tech News Weekly, which is a show I host with Jason Howell, we use a prompter. And that means having to make sure that a certain file, it has to be a text file, is in the proper Dropbox folder so that it can be opened by the engineer who's running the prompter. And what we used to do was take the text and uh, make a document of it or or open up a local uh, text editor, save that, then upload that thing to Dropbox. With Zapier, we can copy, make a Google Doc really quick, drop it in the right folder, and boom, it takes care of the rest of converting it into a plain text file, dropping it into Dropbox, and making it so that it pops up easily on the prompter. If you want to check it out, you can create so many different things. You just have to go there and give it a try, give it a shot, check out what, uh, how it can help you. 
You can make more time to grow your business right now through the end of next month. You can try Zapier free by going to zapier.com slash iOS. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R.com slash iOS for your free 14-day trial. Zapier.com slash iOS. Woo! Now, as I mentioned, this is a special episode of iOS today, thanks to the lovely fires that are uh, that are pelting us here in the in Northern California. Um, and so we thank you all for uh, tuning in for this special episode if you're here. And that means that it's time for the app caps already, uh, which means, as you know, that we put on hats to celebrate our app picks of the week. Howdy, y'all. My name's Micah Sargent, and I am from Northern California right now, uh, wearing my hat. To, to keep myself safe, keep my noggin safe. Now, what does your hat say over there, pal? <laughs> oh, com- just a, computers. I like computers. Um, this is a, I think Marco Armand sells these. And they, I think they used to be red. And then he was like, maybe I shouldn't maybe make we should red, do hats red hats yeah. anymore. Um, but I like computers, so I have a computer set. Very cool. Very cool, I mean. Um, <laughs> so given that there's... Uh, cool, quote-unquote. <laughs> cool. <laughs> right, yeah, cool. Uh, given that we are fighting the the fire... Well, there are wonderful people out there fighting the fires, but we are dealing with um, the ash in the air and things like that, I thought I would talk about a great app called Air Visual. Um, air Visual is an air quality monitoring app, and it... Uh, uses your location to give you some information not only about the current issues that are or the, the current uh, AQI that's all air quality index, uh, but it can also tell you how much uh, junk is in the air and give you a forecast, which I think is very important. Um, before, yeah, uh, we've got some days coming up where it could get up to uh, 300 on the AQI, which is really, really bad. Um, So this information kind of gives you that nice forecast. It tells you, hey, here's some things that you should do. You need to be wearing a mask. You should run an air purifier. uh, Keep your windows closed. And please don't go biking or do any outdoor exercise. (laughs) And then it'll show you how much uh, pollutants are in the air. So right now it's at 52.3, which is my understanding is pretty not great. Um, What I like about this app is that it also has a feature that you can turn on in settings. Let me find the settings here. Uh, called widgets, no, no, app icon. And so I choose yes, and I choose a location, which is here in Petaluma. And when I pop out of the app, it uses a notification tag to tell me the current (laughs) AQI. Uh, So I can see the auto quality, the air quality. I keep wanting to say auto quality, but the air quality of uh, the place. So I've tried a few of these apps. um, And this one is my favorite among the ones that I've tried it gives you the wind direction too, as well as like the current temperature and things, but the forecasting feature is really great. Now, this is made by IQ Air, which does make an air filter, uh, or not an air filter, but an air quality testing device. And so if that's something that, you know, you want to try out, you can, but you don't need to have that in order to be able to, to test your, your air quality. Um, but that is Air Visual, and it's available in the App Store It is available in the App Store for free, uh, so you can check that out. Matthew Casanelli, what do you got for us, partner? Just real quick, I am downloading that one because that's really helpful, especially I... My air quality here is terrible, too. I do have Siri shortcuts that accomplish something similar um, because you can... The get weather forecast action in shortcuts can... You can extract air quality index and the category out of that, but... I do like that notification sounds really good and getting or the widget the badge there it goes sounds really helpful and getting notifications is something that shortcuts couldn't do but it's like here in Berkeley it's 64 which is moderate. Yeah, um, so that's it's actually not so bad. that bad right now. Mm-hmm. But um my app of the week I'm actually going to change it. I was going to say Endel for Apple Watch which is a nice little ambient sound Apple Watch and I just did but um <laughs> <laughs> the one that I actually I in spirit of deep fusion is there's a couple of apps out there where you can measure the lightness. So deep fusion works between 
one lux and like a thousand, I think, which is a measure of light in an area. There's there's all these like different terms, <clears throat> um, but basically this app lets you point at like a certain spot mm -hmm. and then it will tell you what the current brightness Ooh, is. Oh, nice. So like if you point it out of a window, it goes way above it, but it basically helps you. I mean, in reality, diffusion mostly works just indoors where mm -hmm. it's like if it's not night and it's not incredibly bright, that's where this will like make your photos twi have twice as much detail. But this is a, I actually put out a request. I was like, can somebody make an app that doesn't suck that does this? Because <laughs> these are like not even shaped for the right. iPhone 10. <laughs> so like <laughs> a lot of these apps are just like, what technically works right now, I was like, I would totally buy a new one if it actually worked well and some sort of fancy shortcuts support would be amazing as usual. <laughs> well, he's putting out the call, but um, yeah, so we'll we'll link to the one that is available right now uh, for you to check out. But yeah, that's great. With, with uh, updating to iOS 13.2, if you've got one of the new phones and you want to see is the new deep fusion sweater mode, beard mode feature going to work for me, uh, <laughs> you start with that app to measure the Lux and then you'll be able to take the photo with that uh, available. So that's pretty neat. All right. And I also are just those realized free or? Before, yeah, those ones are all free. I don't think they're charging for them anymore. Cool. I was just going to say, I totally forgot that I'm wearing my drafts shirt yes. that I talked about earlier. So <laughs> now, if I, if I tap on you, will I be able to leave a <laughs> message or does a that dictation. work? That yeah, yeah, you can yeah. just scribble right on the shirt. And then. <laughs> <laughs> Save a reminder, please. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, Matthew Castanelli, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me on iOS today, a day early. Totally. Um, you know what? I'm kind of happy you didn't have to make the journey up into the more uh, yeah. dangerous, Drive smoky into parts. the inferno. Like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad that we got to do this here. Um, folks, we didn't have uh, time for, for feedback and questions today, but there are some great questions that I will be addressing very soon. If you would like to send us some questions, some feedback, or a video, which I saw, we've got a video. Uh, you can send those to iOS today at twit.tv. If you record a video, you can you know share it via a Dropbox link or you can upload to YouTube, keep those around about 30 seconds uh, so we don't have to edit them down. Uh, we typically record the show live every Tuesday at about 9 to 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. That's 1.30 p.m. Eastern. And you can watch live. You can join us at twit.tv slash live. Uh, if you'd like to come join us in the studio audience, you do that by emailing tickets at twit.tv. If you're listening to this show and it's your first time or your second time, well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you'd like to keep getting them, regardless of what time they publish, then go ahead and subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash iOS. If you head there, we've got links that you can click on that will subscribe in all of your favorite apps. So no matter what you use, you'll be able to get those. And you can also subscribe to the show on YouTube. Uh, but it is time to say goodbye. Our app caps are done. Matthew Castanelli, thank you so much. Folks, thank this you for having me iOS today.